What's up, Slackers? AC Product here, bringing to you another movie review. Uh, today I'm here to review a classic movie. A Schwarzenegger movie! Alright, so, um, first of all, I'd like to say I don't hate this movie as much as I do towards, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, by the way. Uh, click right there, right now, if you want to go watch the video. Thank you, and, um, yeah, go away. There it goes. Now, um, what's up with Arnold Schwarzenegger? I mean, seriously. He's so bad, he's amazing, and you can't stop watching him no matter how hard you try. Now, if there's any Arnold movie that can make his old formula seem old and stale, apart from all his other ones, it's Last Action Hero. You'd think the director of Die Hard and Predator would have to keep audiences entertained, but nope, we find through this bore fest that even the action-packed directors have a bad movie every once in a while. So we open with a bunch of cops focused on a building where some psycho was holding children hostage. Who could possibly save the day? Put that cookie down! It's Arnold playing Jack Slater, a cop who, mo who most movie cops have to deal with, the typical screaming boss. I'm gonna sit and wait for the real hostage negotiator! The last time you pulled this job did it bug pop going at TK! He then walks past the pointless Tina Turner cameo, thanks Tina, your checks in the mail, as he faces one cop who doesn't want him to pass. Hey, you want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. Yeah! What? Hey, you want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. What does that mean? Did he kick him so far it's the equivalent of an acre? Are his balls the acre? I mean, what is the joke? We then get to the rooftop where we see the psycho is holding the kids. Gave my word of honor he can watch you die. He coincidentally has Slater's son hostage. Now lose the gun. All right, I'm unarmed, so let the boy go. Yeah, let the boy go. You mean he has a name? Being his father, I thought you'd know that. So it turns out this movie is well, just the movie being watched by a whiny protagonist named Danny. He's friends with an usher at the movie theater, played by Robert Protsky. The new Jack Slater opens this weekend at the Odyssey. So being a good friend. He promised Danny a free screening of the next Jack Slater movie, as long as he goes back to school, which he had been skipping out on. There they show films of a lesser caliber like Hamlet. And so he goes to heaven. Talk, just do it! Man, Shakespeare's like the worst writer ever. Danny starts to daydream about what the film would be like if Arnold were in it. Stay thy hand, fair prince. Who said I'm fair? Enjoy it while you can, Arnold. That's the closest to Hamlet you're ever gonna get. To be or not to be. Not to be. So Danny goes home and gets yelled at at his mom before she sets out for work. And uh, so he sits around, watches TV and stuff, and finally gets ready to go to the show. Whoa! You alone? Okay. Hello, sudden dark. Turn. Oh, tough guy. Do it. Go ahead. Okay, movie, this is pretty screwed up right here. So he handcuffs him in the bathroom and searches the place. You got junk! No jewelry, no VCR! Go fishing, we go. So, after that pointlessly disturbing detour, Danny heads to the movie theater where Protsky is waiting for him. Is the print under your wall? Oh, just a minute, young man. Aren't we forgetting something? A ticket. When I was about your age, that's just the one. Harry Houdini played this theater, and he made a gesture. Houdini did. Like this. And all of a sudden, and this was in his hand. It's a magic ticket. It was given to me by the best magician in India, and it was given to him by the best magician in Tibet. Okay, movie, we already had one strange turn. We don't need another one. Mine. And now it's yours. Alright, fine. Time for another. Sonic says... Hey, kids. Strangers may offer you all sorts of things to get you come in their movies. Magical tickets and all that kind of stuff. But chances are they're probably just trying to touch your bathing suit area, and that's no good. So if a stranger, especially Robert Prochke, tries to touch your business, just get out of there! And start showing the movie for Danny to enjoy. 
We see a guy being interrogated by a mob boss playing by Anthony Quinn. You want me to make him operate on you? Okay. We then cut to Jack Slater entering his friend conveniently before he dies. Tony Vivaldi and the Torelli mob are joining forces. Frank. Frank. What even killed him? Was watching Arnold do drama that bad? It's a bomb! Of course, the bomb was tied to the cards or something. Two days to determine. Did the saxophone just laugh? So the chase is on. Hired goons are sent out after Slater, and suddenly the magic ticket actually transports Danny into the movie. Whoa! Who the hell are you? I'm Danny Madigan. I'm a kid. You're tying me with no hands. I think it's easy if you practice a lot. I asked that guy, cone of phrase. Wait a minute. The bad puns, the voice, the hard rock. He plays chicken with the truck while which explodes before touching the ground be because physics <laughs> crashes into the Benny Hill show. So the kid is taken back to the police station where he comes across Sharon Stone from Basic Instinct and Robert Patrick from Terminator 2. Jack! Did you see that? No, no, wait, wait. Okay, movie. First of all, cameos have to make sense. Just because some of these people have been in movies doesn't mean they have to be exactly in your movie. It's like saying Little Richards in this movie. I'm a big time fan of Jack Slater. I've been joking. Jean Claude Van Damme. I will never miss the premiere for some. Jim Belushi. I just want to be there when it happens. Free Bogart. Is looking at you, kid. Chevy Chase and Damon Wayans walking side by side. What is going on? WHY ARE THERE SO MANY RANDOM CAMEOS?! Alright, um, anyways, uh, Slater gets called into his office to be yelled at his boss again. While the kid just keeps pointing out all the cliches pretty much before the audience does. I'm willing to bet that everyone has a 555 number. There are no unattractive women here. I was just in a real police station, and this is much nicer. So, Danny takes Slater to a video store to prove that Slater isn't real and is really an actor named Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then they come across something that's actually pretty funny. You know, I'll be back a little awesome of Easter Baby and uh, yeah. So we get some scenes of them talking, more scenes of them talking, and even more scenes of them talking. You know, speaking isn't really Arnold's strong point. Couldn't you give him a gun or a bomb or even a free suit? I don't care, just give him something. Make no mistake, they are exceptionally well-trained. Alright, so they go back to Slater's house, and uh, Slater drops off Danny with his incredibly attractive daughter as he drives off to have a flashback. He flashes back to his son, who was apparently murdered, twice, as the shot tells us, as they are suddenly approached by the bad guys. Wow, that was much needed in this scene. Okay, I don't know if you understand when to scream. Screaming is for when you're in trouble. Suddenly, Slater arrives just in time to help. Alright, that's pretty cool. So they have a little gunfight in the house as the others drive off in a car. Danny gets on a girl's bike, who belongs to the grown-up daughter. Chicken it is. Kid, what's wrong with you? You're on a bike. They're in a car. Do the math. This is gonna work. It's a movie. I'm a good guy. This has got to work. Oh shit. I'm a comedy psychic! And a rather unfunny one. Ah! 
E.T. Phone Lawyers! May I remind you this is a PG-13 movie? As in, no one above the age of 13 would find all these jokes funny? And yes, that is smoke coming out of the boss's ears. So Slater is laid off, which means they're gonna go out and stop the crime by themselves anyways. Somehow they find out that some body at a funeral is gonna explode as Slater is stopped by his old friend, played by F. Murray Abraham. Man, are you an idiot? You made the classic movie mistake! Don't explain- But during Danny's monologue, Quaid gets them both. I have to go and establish my alibi. <laughs> Arrivederci. They are saved by the cartoon cat. Yup, an Arnold movie where they're saved by a friggin' cat. As he goes to the funeral to get the body away from everyone before it explodes. Man's not dead! Can somebody help this man here? Look out! Well, Danny figures out how to use a crane to get Slater away faster. This results in one of the weirdest slow mo shots ever. You may be able to call this the Wily e. Coyote. So anyways, the bad guy gets the magic ticket and sees what it can do. But not before Slater quietly enters. Don't move. Alright, Slater. I'll go quietly. This is for my daughter's black eye! Usually when I do that, it leaves a whore. There was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom! So Slater and Danny go into the real world where Slater discovers things don't work the way it used to back in his movie. Here's another explosion for your movie kid. So then for a while the movie goes on and it's just Slater moping around with the realization he's just a fictional character. It's a nightmare the rest of your life. But you're fictional, so who cares? I'm sorry. But I don't find it so new and exciting to discover that my whole life has been a damn movie. And for a long, 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 long series of events, they finally realize the assassin is going to attack the premiere of the new Jack Slater movie. Benedict is gonna kill Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger? Who's Slater? Bingo. Yeah, bingo! Except, no, that makes no sense. But, whatever. So that freak from the beginning comes back to kill Arnold in real life. Rip, Rip, come here. What did Rip bring you here tonight? You know, I just wanted to tell people they can save money by switching to Geico, and even a caveman could do it. Ha! <laughs> well, enjoy the show. By the way, this is where we get a lot of those pointless cameos. They walk in front of the camera, and then just kind of walk away. He tries to kill Arnold, but fails, so he kidnaps Danny and holds him on the roof. Gee, this looks familiar. Even you and me, so let the boy go. And we've played this number before, haven't we, Chef? <laughs> So Slater gets the psycho, but gets hunted down by the main bad guy. And of course, he reveals an entire plan. I'll fetch him. Dracula, I can get King Kong. Have a surprise party for that old Hitler. Hannibal Lecter can do the catering. All I have to do is snap my fingers and they'll be here. Wow, that's actually a pretty cool plan. I can't wait to see the possibility. Duh, of course, they have to ruin the only cool plot point in this movie. Anyways, Arnold is put back in the movie, Danny's reunited with the Protsky character, and the movie ends happily. After watching this movie, again, I realize it's boring, annoying, and unfunny. Thanks for watching, Slackers. NEC Product is out. Peace.